still breathing through a tracheotomy tube, and he couldn't speak or move very much independently. Alex was living in a medical foster home, and Amy assisted his foster mother by providing in-home care. Alex suffered a stroke before he was six months old. The stroke damaged the right side of his brain, his entire frontal lobe, and his temporal lobe that houses communication. It also left him with almost no feeling or usage on the left side of his body. This left the doctors questioning his ability to walk and talk in the future. The doctor said at best he might be able to breathe without the breathing tube, but he would never eat without a feeding tube, walk on his own, talk or communicate, and he would always need full-time care. Alex's birth mother loved him, but she could not provide the care that he needed. So at nine months old, he entered the foster care system, and after spending more than a year in the ICU, he was placed with his foster mother, Debbie. When Debbie needed someone to care for Alex on the occasional weekend, Amy was the natural choice. On these weekend visits to Amy's house, Alex became a regular part of her family. Her two daughters treated him just like a little brother. Alex also had a CASA volunteer, Ashley Frischke. Ashley had been an advocate before, but never for a child who struggled with communication. Ashley felt that if she knew what was normal for Alex, she would know if something were off. So, Ashley spent time with Alex. They would kick a ball around together or play Paw Patrol. Hmm. During COVID, Alex's foster mom, Debbie, reluctantly realized that she could not continue to provide the high level of care that Alex needed. That's when Amy asked if Alex could come live with her permanently. This is where Alex's CASA volunteer, Ashley, really made a difference. Ashley was able to talk to Alex and ask him how he felt about living with Amy permanently. Ashley was able to tell the court that Amy would be an amazing placement for Alex. When it came time to move, Alex told Ashley, this is the best day of my life. When Alex first moved into Amy's home, he had to wear a helmet to keep from hurting himself when he got frustrated. He couldn't walk independently, he had to eat using a GI tube, and was completely reliant on others to perform daily personal tasks. With the help from Amy and his sisters, Alex no longer must wear his helmet or leg braces. He no longer requires his feeding tube and continues to learn to be independent every day. In fact, last Christmas, Alex was so proud of having his feeding tube removed that he told Santa, I can swallow now. <laughs> After living with Amy for almost a year, Alex's adoption was finalized this past April. With the, with the adoption day quickly approaching, Alex told Ashley excitedly, I get to be adopted. I've never been adopted before. <laughs> Amy encourages Alex to have a relationship with his birth mother. When the adoption day was approaching, Alex's birth mother told him, I am so happy that you get to have Amy as a mommy. Now Alex is in seventh grade and in middle school. He rides the bus and walks to class without assistance. He eats lunch with his classmates, but not through a feeding tube. He loves Spider-Man, swimming, and dancing. He loves to ride his adaptive bike and says he will have a two-wheeler someday. He's active in the Special Olympics and is a peer mentor at school. Most importantly, he is starting to learn to advocate for himself. On his adoption day, the first person he saw at the courthouse was Ashley. He was so excited to see her, and throughout the adoption hearing, Ashley helped Alex feel safe and calm. Ashley was a big part of getting Alex to permanency after being in foster care for 11 years. CASA volunteers like Ashley advocate for kids like Alex every day. They may not all have the same special needs as Alex, but they all have the special need for love and for our family. Thank you. And we are so honored because both Ashley and Amy are here today. I would ask them to stand up and please give them a round.